Hello, travelers. Welcome to Reach the World. For over 20 years, Reach the World has used virtual exchange to inspire youth to become curious, confident, and compassionate global citizens. My name is Tim, and I'm glad you're joining us today for our Meet the World live stream event. The Meet the World program builds positive personal connections between students in the U.S. and global cultures, all through direct interactions with real people who are excited to share their countries and cultures with you. For a complete listing of upcoming Meet the World live stream events, you can visit athome.reachtheworld.org. Today, we're traveling to Jordan with Amity scholar Ron Khalil. Ron is from Amman, Jordan. She's currently a graduate student studying English literature at the University of Northern Iowa in Cedar Falls, Iowa. Uh, Ron, is, Ron is joining us today from Iowa to tell us more about her home country of Jordan and Jordanian culture. And she's gonna answer any questions you have along the way. But before I turn things over to her, I wanna welcome the teachers and students who are watching today's Meet the World live stream event. Please feel free to use the YouTube chat bar to let us know you're here, where you're joining from, and of course, to share any questions you have for our guests as we go. We'll get to as many questions as we can in the next 30 minutes or so. All right, it's time to take a journey to Jordan. Ron, welcome to Reach the World. Thank you. Um, hello, everyone, and thank you, Tim, and Reach the World for this great opportunity. I'm so excited to be here today and talk to you about Jordan, my home country. Um, Let's share the screen here. Uh, can you see the screen? Okay. So today I'm going to take you on a journey to visit the most popular landmarks in Jordan and talk about um, some Jordanian cuisine uh, by the end of this presentation. So as you can see, behind me is the Jordanian flag. Um, one interesting fact about the flag is that the star and the flag in the Crimson Triangle is a seven-pointed Islamic star um, that represents the seven verses of Surah Al-Fatiha, which is the first surah in the Holy Quran, um, which uh, the Holy Quran is the hobby book for Muslims. So I thought that would be interesting to share about the flag before we start. Okay, so this is Jordan. Uh, you can see it, it's uh, in green right here. And uh, this is where you are, somewhere in the U.S. And um, so you can see where Jordan is in relation to the U.S. Uh, Jordan is known for its strategic location. So it's at, at, at the crossroads of Asia, Africa, and Europe. This is a closer look um, at Jordan and the map. So we see here some countries that surround Jordan. So we have uh, Syria, um, uh, Iraq, uh, Saudi Arabia. And you can see some main uh, cities in Jordan. So the capital of Jordan is Amman. Um, we'll talk about it in a little bit. And you can see other main uh, cities like Irbid, uh, Madaba, Al Zarqa, um, uh, Al Aqaba, uh, Ma'an. Um, all right. So uh, let's talk about Amman, the capital. So in English, it's Amman, in Arabic, it's Amman. Uh, it's the capital and the largest city in Jordan. Uh, it has the population of over 4 million people, and it's the largest uh, city in the Levant region and the sixth largest city in the Arab world. So during the Iron Age, it was known as Amun or Amun, and then it was named uh, Philadelphia during the Greek and Roman periods. And finally, during the Islamic uh, period, it was uh, named Am Amman or Amman. And another interesting fact about Amman is that it was initially built on seven hills uh, and now it spans over 19 hills, which combines uh, 22 areas. All right. So another interesting fact about Jordan is that it's a kingdom. So uh, Jordan uh, in Arabic, al Uddun, is called the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan. So we have the king, uh, King Abdullah II, and the queen, Queen Rania who was uh, very active um, in a lot of aspects all over the world, and uh, the rest of the royal family. Okay, now let's start our journey to discover the most famous sites in Jordan. So we'll start with the Dead Sea. Now the Dead Sea is actually dead, and you might be wondering how is it dead? Well, it's uh, due to the fact uh, that it's very, very salty. So its high salinity prevents um, 
organisms like fish, uh, plants, from living in it. You, you could find sometimes a fungi present or bacteria, but it's mostly dead because of the salinity. Okay, another fact about the Dead Sea is that it's the, it has the lowest elevation of water on Earth. So the Dead Sea is at over 430 meters below the sea level, so it's very, very low. And um, again, it's the lowest point on Earth, and uh, it's thought to form part of the Great Rift Valley, and it stretches from, the southern, uh, Afri from southern Africa to Syria. And uh, its unique geological and geographical features um, are fed by the River Do Jordan and a lot of wadis and springs. Another fact about the Dead Sea is that it's, again, one of the saltiest bodies of water on Earth. So if you're swimming in the Dead Sea, you can't really drown, you'll float because of its um, high density and, and uh, salt levels. And um, yeah, so it's famous for the high salt content of any water body in the world. And its delicate uh, ecosystem is a product of a desert microclimate, so the temperature is really, really high and uh, the depth below sea level and which means the water has no outlet and there's a very very high evaporation rate which has resulted in the increased salinity and that's been very attract attractive to people from all over the world uh, the fact that it's lifeless uh, lifeless and has been for over centuries all right so a fourth fact about the dead sea is that it's the considered the biggest spa on earth so it has a lot of the mud and the waters of the Dead Sea has a lot of um, minerals like magnesium, uh, bromide, sod sodium. And um, the mud uh, has properties of uh, soothing clay and um, are thought uh, to draw out toxins and um, exfoliate uh, the skin. And uh, also like it soothes stress. So um, a lot of people use it for mental purposes as well. And, um, and mostly it's used for skin products like masks, scrubs, all over the world. And uh, when it comes to the salt, it also has a lot of wonderful uh, properties. So it's antifungal, um, antibacterial, it uh, helps cleanse and uh, detoxify the pores uh, of your skin. Um, it drives out the soil, the dirt. Um, also, it's thought to, be, to help eliminate acne, pimples, blackheads, whiteheads. So. Um, it's, it's uh, rich with uh, properties and it has a lot of uh, usages all over. Um, people come from all over the world to enjoy the, the Dead Sea and its uh, spa. Okay, now let's travel from the Dead Sea to the canyons and mountains of um, what is now the southwestern corner of Jordan and visit Petra. Okay, so Petra is known as the Red Rose City and it's one of the seven wonders of the world. Um, it was the capital of the Nabatanian kingdom, and it fell under the control of the Roman Empire at the beginning of the second century, so it's an ancient city. Um, it's rich in natural resources. Uh, the location is uh, at a crossroad of the region's most important trade route, so you can imagine how important it was uh, historically. Um, also, uh, notably, you can only access it uh, by foot, so you have to uh, walk on foot um, by way of the narrow sea or canyon. Um, and at the end of the, of the canyon, you'll see the treasury or al-khazna in Arabic, um, which is one of the most elaborate temples in this ancient town. Uh, the structure of the treasury uh, was carved out of a sandstone rock face. So it's, that's very impressive. And that's what, um, uh, how Petra gained its um, popularity and how it became uh, one of the wonders of the world because it's uh, carved out of, of stone so it took um, a lot of effort and time uh, to to carve this uh, treasury out of uh, imagine like hard uh, stone okay all right if you didn't know this a lot of movies were also filmed in Petra so you might be uh, you might have heard of Indiana Jones or the mummy returns and also other movies that are not mentioned here because of its uh, special atmosphere, location, the ancient buildings. Um, so yeah, okay. Now let's move to the Northwest of Jordan and explore an ancient castle. So Ajlon Castle or uh, Qalat Ajlon in Arabic 
is a 12th century Muslim castle. It's placed on a hilltop, uh, as you can see in the picture, uh, to the Mount Tajlon district. And um, the castle's primary function was uh, to counter the crusader threat, uh, but uh, as this uh, peril um, diminished, basically, the castle helped to, to control and protect the city in general. So it was a fortress, basically, um, protecting the city. And, uh, and of course, the fact that it's on a hill helped the uh, people there to, to look over the city and protect it. Okay. Now, traveling from um, Ajlon's castle to the southern part of Jordan, um, when you go there, you'll find Wadi Ram. Also, Wadi Ram is known as the Valley of the Moon. So, Wadi means valley in Arabic. Um, and it's known for its uh, beautiful skies, beautiful sunrises and sunsets. And um, also, if you go there, uh, you'll find a variety of bird life, like buzzards, vultures, eagles, and um, a lot of people like to go there, uh, they go camping, um, also uh, they practice photography there, especially at night. So here you can see a picture of the Milky Way over um, the Wadi Ram Desert. It's a very famous uh, landmark in Jordan. Okay, so let's go back to the capital, Amman, and talk about the Roman theater. So the Roman theater is a 6,000 se uh, seat a second century Roman theater. It's a very famous landmark in the capital, Amman, and uh, it dates back to the Roman period. So it dates back to the time when Amman was called Philadelphia. The Roman amphitheater is located in the eastern part of uh, the capital, and the highest uh, section of the seats in the theater, like you can see in the picture, are known in British English as the gods with a small g. Um, even uh, though from far the stage, uh, it offers excellent sight lines. Um, so you could, people used to be able to hear um, the actors uh, who would be acting uh, over here at the bottom, even if they uh, sat at the high section of the seats. Um, now, the theater is used as a venue for activities, so cultural activities like um, Amman International Book Fair, the uh, prize ceremony, a lot of musical concerts, and um, a famous music festival called Al Balad. So now it's used for different purposes um, than it was used back then, but it's still uh, a very famous and uh, uh, site in in the capital. Okay, we're still in Amman. We're still in the capital. And we're traveling to the center of Amman, uh, downtown Amman. So, and uh, we're talking about the Amman Citadel here. So the Citadel, or uh, fortress, dates back to the Bronze Age, so 1650 to 1550 BC. At that time, um, it was used as a public space for arts, for sports, for politic political debates, and uh, it occupied the hill. Um, the most uh, significant side there is uh, the Roman structure of the Temple of uh, Hercules, which you can see over here. And from the citadel, Citadel's vent, uh, vantage point, uh, which is situated at the highest hill in Amman, you can see as far in every direction across the city. And throughout the years, you can see the doves there circle over. And also, they're usually joined by kites, especially during the winter and the springtime. I think you can see some of the kites over here. So a lot of festivals take place there, um, like musical festivals, for example. Uh, it's been happening over the years. People visit, they uh, go inside, inside the buildings, and uh, it's uh, visited from all over the world. Okay, so if you're traveling to Jordan to check out and visit all these incredible landmarks that we've just talked about, you definitely want to eat. Um, so we can't really talk about Jordan without talking about food. Um, so we're going to talk about a couple of traditional dishes. Uh, the one in this picture is one of the most famous dishes. It's called, in Arabic, um, mensaf. Uh, so it's mainly um, rice, uh, beef, uh, also um, uh, usually eaten with uh, sour yogurt and uh, special bread. Um, and it's used a lot in celebrations, uh, special occasions, and uh, it's definitely a lunch, uh, a meal uh, that people have for lunch. Um, so it's the, I, I think it's the most famous uh, dish in, uh, in Jordan. 
Okay, so as you travel downtown to maybe see the Citadel or uh, the Roman Theater, um, you definitely have to try the Jordanian traditional breakfast, which is mainly uh, falafel, and uh, falafel are made out of uh, lentils, uh, chickpeas, uh, special spices, then they're made into uh, some sort of paste, and then they're uh, made into like this, these sh shapes, ball-like shapes, um, falafel, and then they're deep fried. Uh, also, uh, there's hummus, like you can see over here, it's different types of hummus. Uh, which is mainly made out of uh, chickpeas and uh, we usually have it with olive oil and it's eaten with bread um, Also, it's well known uh, in Jordan to, to have olives for breakfast and usually people drink tea, red tea um, sometimes coffee, but mostly tea and um, uh, Yeah, some people like to eat uh, eggs too in breakfast for breakfast, but uh, falafel and hummus would be the the major um, the major dishes. Okay, uh, another back to lunch. Another uh, famous food is called uh, makluba or makluba, uh, which is basically a rice cake. You could you could think of it as a rice cake. It has um, it's made in different ways in different countries and different regions of the country. Uh, but the one I know is mostly made out of rice, eggplants, or cauliflower, um, and then it has beef, uh, sometimes chicken, uh, or chicken, and um, definitely eaten for lunch, and has a lot of uh, nuts on top, and um, yeah, it does look like a, a cake, just not, not for dessert. Okay. So, a very famous street food in Jordan that you will find anywhere uh, and everywhere if, especially if you're visiting all these sites that we've talked about, is uh, shawarma, which uh, is a very, very popular uh, food in Jordan. And it's a famous Middle Eastern kind of sandwich. You could consider it a meal. It mainly consists of meat uh, cut into thin slices, and then the slices are stacked in a cone-like shape. And then um, it's roasted. So it keeps going uh, round and round and to get roasted. And once it's cooked, um, it's uh, uh, made into a sandwich with a special bread and special spices. People eat pickles with it, um, some uh, special garlic sauce, and sometimes cucumber, olives. Um, so yeah, you, you find this anywhere you go, and it's very cheap, affordable, and, and very common. All right. So last but not least uh, is um, a delicious dessert that is very popular in Jordan, which is kanafa in Arabic. So it's a traditional Middle Eastern dessert uh, made mainly with shredded pastry. Uh, so the pastry is soaked in uh, sugar syrup and it's typically layered with special uh, kind of cheese. And um, Sometimes uh, other ingredients like clotted cream or nuts, uh, it depends on the region really. Um, it's very popular not only in Jordan, but in the Arab world in general, uh, particularly uh, the Levant area and Egypt. And you can find even some uh, variants of kanafa in Turkey, Greece, uh, other countries in the area. And uh, just like mensa that we talked about earlier, it's served in special occasions, like if somebody is uh, celebrating a newborn baby or uh, if somebody um, when somebody graduates from college or maybe buys a new house so it's basically an expression of uh, of love of um, hospital like um, interacting with people and celebration um, so yeah, you should definitely try it if you ever uh, visit Jordan so thank you for tuning in and exploring Jordan with me I'm so glad to be here and um, let me know if you have any questions and feel free to do so thank you so much Tim yeah, thank you, Ron. What a great presentation. If you want to come out a screen share, we'll have a chance to talk about some questions. And for anybody who's watching the live stream right now, if you want to submit a question into the YouTube chat bar, I'll keep an eye out and we can incorporate it into our conversation. There was so much that you talked about in that presentation. You did a great job of getting me personally, and I assume everybody else who's watching, interested in one or more aspects of, of Jordan, um, and I, so I hardly know where to start. Uh, but the, the first thing that really caught my attention was the fact that Amman used to be called Philadelphia. Anybody who lives in the United States will 
give take pause and think what uh, what, a, what an interesting story I, I have to learn some more about that because I would never have expected that um, I wanted to ask you if you have ever been to the Dead Sea and what it was like if you have what it was like I have been once uh, it's it's very interesting I think um, it's as magnificent as it looks in pictures. It does have a lot of salt uh, and um, it is definitely very low. So you could experience like your ears would uh, would start buzzing and you'd feel a little dizzy. Um, and then you'd see a lot of people um, basically using these masks uh, of mud scrubs and um, trying to float. And it's it's exactly like the pictures. It's uh, a very, it was a very interesting experience. Um, you feel like it's a very low point on earth, like for real. So uh, yeah. that's, that's really cool. I'll bet that's a, a neat experience. And I'm sure a, a popular experience for anybody who's visiting Jordan, something they have to try yeah. um, because it's so unique. Um, for everyone who loves history, it seems like Jordan is at the center of so much. I mean, you mentioned the Bronze Age, the Romans, the Middle Ages, and all of that is set within modern skyscrapers in downtown yeah. Amman. Do you, when you are in Jordan and when you're moving around Jordan, does it feel like you are living in lots of different time periods at once? Well, I think um, preparing for this presentation has reminded me of how much uh, the rich history that Jordan has. And definitely when it comes to history, if you love history, you'll definitely need to visit Jordan, which is something that a lot of people take for granted when they live there. So definitely now, whenever I go back, I will look at all of that from in a different perspective and appreciate it more. So. Yeah, it's, it's very cool. And there are a lot of connections between what kids are studying in school right now and some aspect of some historical era that involved modern day Jordan somehow. Yeah, so um, I think that's really cool. Mm -hmm. um, for we, we have a lot of classrooms that, that are watching from the New York City area, and I saw your picture. We say shawarma, uh, but the, the, uh, the meat, the sliced meat is something that is really all over the place in New York City, and I know other cities as well. So I wanted to just recommend to any uh, U.S. students who are watching, if you want to try at least one of the things that Ron mentioned as a, a Jordanian food or a food that has... Uh, connections to Jordan, that might be a good place to start. Very tasty, highly recommended. Definitely. Um, so you also um, told us a lot about Jordan and shared some of the highlights of Jordan. And I'm wondering about you personally, we're really lucky to get to talk to you today because you have spent almost two years, if not a full two years in the United States now. You're a very interesting bridge between the two cultures that we're thinking about and talking about right now, I'd love to hear what got you interested in studying in a different country and what the what living in Iowa and studying and teaching in Iowa has been like for you. Um, thank you for this question. Well, um, I think that it has taught me a lot as a on a personal level and also a professional level. And the main thing I I I can think of right now is how um, similar we are in many aspects, uh, although on the surface level there are a lot of cultural differences and we don't speak the same language uh, per se or um, we have different traditions, but we share more than um, we think we do uh, with the American culture and the American people. So, And um, the U.S. Is, is definitely has a lot of people from all over the world. So uh, it's a great opportunity to learn about a lot of cultures, not just one. So yeah, it's definitely been at first a difficult experience, but then I started uh, appreciating the, uh, the cultural value and um, the human connection with the people here and people in the Midwest, especially Iowa, are extremely nice and kind and um, they are um, very welcoming. So I've been um, lucky in that respect. Is there, if you can think back to uh, your first time in Iowa two years ago, was there anything that surprised you about mm -hmm. Iowa? The Definitely the agricultural um, aspect, the a lot of uh, corn, a lot of empty fields. That's not something that I'm used to uh, I, because I was, I grew up in a city, a very populated city. So I don't really see a lot of empty land um, in Amman. 
which is completely the opposite here. So you could drive for hours and hours and all you can see around you is um, fields of corn or um, farmland, which is which definitely was the first thing, um, the most striking thing I say that I that I noticed. All right, great. Um, if you had to recommend to people or to kids who are really young, um, what else they might want to research or look up or um, or learn that would give them a really good idea of what life was like in Jordan. Um, can you recommend any things um, that they could look into? Well, if anybody is interested in the Roman uh, or the Greek culture, um, there's a lot of history there. And uh, it's interesting to read about like stories of uh, Hercules or Greek mythology and then link that to the place. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely do that if I, if I was a student right now at their level. Great, yeah. One of the easiest ways for, for young students to understand what life is like in another country um, is to do sort of a head-to-head -head comparison between something they're, they're very used to and how it's done maybe differently somewhere else. So if you could give us a, just an example of what an average day would be like for you in Amman, and an average day was like for you in Iowa, I'd love to compare the two. Um, well, an average day in Amman when I was a teacher, was um, waking up in the morning, going to teach amazing students, um, going back home, spending time with family. We uh, we are a collectivistic culture, so there's a lot of focus on the group and the community. So there's a lot of family, a lot of social interaction. Uh, it's a loud city, so I could grab a couple of things on my way home and meet a lot of people. And then, um, yeah, in the evening, could, again, hang out with family or friends. Um, and yeah, so it's, I think it's a uh, social, it's a very um, open and tolerant city with a lot of social activities and a lot of focus on the group. While in the US and Iowa, it's more of an individualistic uh, perspective. So uh, you do spend time with people and definitely hang out with friends and people I know, but it's less focused on the group really. So as an individual, you have more space, um, both physically and metaphorically than you do in Jordan. And I know that it's also a special feature of, in Iowa because uh, it's not really that populated where I live, in the city I live. So um, yeah, definitely um, quieter days, um, more space, um, and less, definitely less interaction, less, less social interaction, yeah. Interesting. If you were a, a fifth grade or about a 10, 11, 12 year old student in Jordan, what would going to school look like for you? Well, you could either walk to school if you go to a public school or you'll be getting on a bus um, if you go to private schools, because so we have these two sectors. And then you'd spend, you'd take eight classes or seven, and then you'll have like two, uh, like maybe one recess, depends on the school system. And uh, so, yeah, you'll take pretty much, it's very similar to, to what you study here because we also do have a lot of American and British schools that kind of are similar to the, to the American uh, educational system. Uh, and then you'd walk home or you would get on the bus and go back home and you would study a lot because it's not really easy. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a lot of, um, yeah, a lot of books that you'll have to carry with you <laughs> and, um, and you'll probably meet your friends over the weekend, just not during the week, and you'll have to sleep early so that you wake up at 6 a.m. and go to school. <laughs> so. Wow, yeah, that's an early start. Yeah. Um, this is always a favorite question for, for students who are watching these events. What do kids in Jordan do for fun? What are their favorite leisure activities? Um, well, they do, I mean, now with the situation, it's not the same, like with right. the and everything, but people like to play in like certain neighborhoods. So the kids in a certain neighborhood would meet after school. So they would uh, play like maybe uh, soccer or um, um, I don't know, just any sports <laughs> or they would uh, use their bikes around. Um, that would, I think what kids would mostly do. Um, they, and now I think maybe they're, they're more interested in going to malls and watching movies um, than they used to be, like maybe, I don't know, 10 years ago when I was 
way younger. Um, so yeah, where we could they could have like they would have lunch with their friends at some fast food place, um, go back to their friend's house, play maybe video games. So yeah. Well, that that a lot of that sounds very familiar, yes. and I'm sure it will sound very familiar to our, our students who are watching today. I, I really appreciate you, Ron, joining us. This Thank has been so, so interesting to Thank learn you. about you and learn about your journey and learn about Jordan. Um, I also want to thank our entire live stream audience for going on this journey with us. Reach the World will be hosting many more Meet the World live stream events over the coming months, and you're all invited to virtually travel the world with us. You can visit at home.reachtheworld.org for more information. Ron, thank you again. And to everybody else, we'll see you next time. Thank you.